Hello and welcome back to Live Laugh Stuck, and this time we are talking about Hive Swap Act 1. And I'm here, of course, with Moosey. Hello, Moosey. Hello. So, Moosey, we, um, we, we've done this in an interesting way in which we played Hive Swap Act 1, the first half of it, in 2023 on Homestuck Day. We played the second half of it in 2024 on Homestuck Day, which was not our initial plans. And then now, oh, here in October, it's almost Halloween. Yep. We are talking about it. So I'm sure that us with our, our memory issues won't have any no, any problems. <laughs> um, it's, it's it's pretty simple. Like, so I was writing down notes for like our our outline of, of the topics to hit of what happened in Hive Swapped. And mm-hmm. I realized it's actually a really simple game. Like there are very like there are only a few objectives and then the little things to get to those main objectives. So yeah. I th- I think it'll be fine once I prompt you on some stuff. What how how do you think? How are you feeling? About Hive Swap? <laughs> yeah, about like remembering Hive Swap, I guess. About like sitting here and talking about it months after having played it. I just opened up a YouTube commentary or no commentary video just so I can like surf around to remember. That's a good idea. Because I remember the first half was like the first half was just escaping your room and then you get teleported. Yeah. And then the next half was like, okay, there's this troll boy. I guess you switch between controlling the. Yeah. But yeah. And then I I don't know. I remember looking at some cleaning supplies. <laughs> yeah, that that's probably right. <laughs> um, well, we'll we'll get to it. Uh I guess for anyone who doesn't know, Hive Swap Act 1. I keep wanting to say Hive Swapped. Like there's a T at the end mm-hmm. of and it doesn't make sense. But um Hive Swap is a game that was initially called I think it was just called the Homestuck Adventure game or something. Uh, and it was backed by a Kickstarter that happened during while while Homestuck was still going on. Um, we've we've gotten past points in the comic that the Kickstarter had been mentioned and had finished and everything. So uh, it was it was a long time in the making. It is still coming out. We have had Act Two and we have had Act Three. I meant to say we've had Act One and Act Two and maybe say that we've had hints for Act Three. I would record over it, but I'm leaving it in here because it explains why Moosey gets confused later. So clearing that up, I meant to say Act 1 and Act 2. Not sure how Act 3 came out. I didn't realize there was going to be more more acts. There's going to be more acts, theoretically. Hypothetically, there are more acts. Hypothetically, there's supposed to be Haunt Switch, uh, which is... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to explaining what, what Hom's... What, Haunt switch is going to be whenever we get there. What Hamsar is? What Hamsar is? Um, what Hams, Hamsar runner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm gonna link to Geo's articles about Hive Swap in the Kickstarter below because that's what I do instead of talking about it because I shouldn't be the person to talk about it anyway because it's all half remembered stuff from Geo's articles. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, anyway, so like I said, we had act. Act 1 come out, then we had Hive Swap Friend Sim, which we are currently playing through on Twitch, and we'll be doing episodes about, and then Hive Swap Act 2 came out later, and um, we will be playing that once we're done with Friend Sim. So then, I thought that, so I was under the impression that Friend Sim was to introduce the characters specifically in Act 2, is... Yes. What, what about Act 3? Um, Act 3? I don't know. Okay. Have you not I mean, played Act 3? Act 3 is not out yet. Oh, okay. But yeah, so we've seen they are working on Act 3. I don't know how far along they are. I don't know if anyone has any idea of how long it's going to take. They are working on it. Oh, for April Fool's Day, we should play that other hussy game. Which other? Steve. Oh, that one. Okay, <laughs> that would be an April Fool's, Fool's joke on me. I'm I'm so sorry, people in my Discord server who like that game, and people who listen who like that game. Um, I just, for my understanding of the philosophy that exists in that game, I dislike it. But I guess you know, can't criticize it if you haven't played it yourself. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, there's so many things we need to do. That would be a, quite the April Fool's joke. 
Mm-hmm. <sighs> anyway, I have Soft Act 1. Yes. So, yes, we start out and we are Joey Claire. It is the 90s and we are the daughter of... Oh my god, I just <laughs> forgot his name for a second. Jake Harley. Uh, which is Jade's grandpa, Jake Harley, not a uh, little little teen guy. Miles, Jake. Okay. Okay. And we also have a uh, little brother, Jude Harley. And we say Joey Claire because that was our mom's name. I don't say we. It's not like Joey, Joey uses Claire because that was her mom's name. And her mom's dead now. And it's a uh, I love my mom. Fuck you, dad. <laughs> uh <laughs> relatable i don't know yeah it just reminds me how um so my parents were in the military and they uh, my mom kept her last name because it was easier than going through the paperwork and yeah. so i thought since my last name was my dad's last name then my, when my little brother was born his last name would be my mom's last name and i was very surprised <laughs> to learn that's not how it worked dang that would have been kind of fun it would have been kind of funny. It would have been terrible to, like, pick kids up at school, <laughs> though, and stuff. And yeah. uh, I, I know that that could get into a whole lot of hassle. But I still think that's how it should have worked. Yeah. Also, name changes are a pain in the butt. Yeah. Yeah, they they are. I've I've been considering one myself, and it's it's just a lot of it's a Paper lot of stuff to time. go through. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I was telling my cousin that. When I, if I have a kid, I should be like, before you're 16, do you want to change your name? Because we're about to open your bank accounts and stuff. Right, Let's right. Your name first. <laughs> you are about to sign your name so many times if you're yes. applying to college. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're so, about to put your name out there so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Before you sign up to 70,000 things that need your name and will be um, so hard to change later, figure out what you want. <laughs> yeah. That, that'd be so good. The new coming of age ritual is figure yeah. out what you're going to put on all of your legal documents. <laughs> anyway, House of Act 1. So you're playing as as Joey, and um, you get to explore her room and just verify that it is indeed the 90s, which I personally love. Uh, mm. I mean, I guess you were more of a 90s kid than I am because I was born in the early 90s and you were born mm. in the late 80s, right? Yeah, I was born in 88. Yeah. So, so you got yeah. to experience a little bit more of the 90s than I did. Yes. Or at least was awa- aware of it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you got some some classic toys like um, the the puppy that gives birth is for some reason the main <laughs> one I'm thinking about now, which to be fair, is re- I- relevant to Joey because she wants to be a, vet- a veterinarian, but also it's wild. There were so many weird dolls that did things like peeing baby doll, eating yeah, baby doll. <laughs> I, I definitely had a doll that I fed. I don't think that she peed, though. But I, I did. Those are separate, I think. Yeah, I did. I did feed her. That was a thing. Um, we had baby tilt and tumble where she'd just do front tumbles. <laughs> that's Cause her, that's because cool. her head was really heavy. I had one of those, um, the the fairies that, like, you pull on the string oh, and yeah. it goes up and spins. Sky dancers? And, yeah, yeah. And it's just, like, obviously so dangerous. And then there's <laughs> this one video I see around of it going straight into a fireplace, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, yes. I would have been devastated as a child, to be clear. Um, but it is funny to watch. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, there was just a lot of weird toys. There was those light brights. Those were cool. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm mentioning mostly stuff that was in her room, but there was a lot of like little stuff that you could find that was just references to the 90s, which um, is, yeah. is I'm super looking neat. At it now, and like the posters of wild animals just reminds me of like the zoo books and stuff you'd always see. Oh my on god, TV. the zoo books! Yeah, <laughs> that uh, that was it. The tiger poster. Get that tiger mm. poster though. <laughs> so we get to be nostalgic for a little bit, but um, shortly after that, shit starts going down. Uh, monsters kind of appear out of nowhere, and they're not monsters that we have seen in Homestuck. They're not like shade imps or anything. They're like blobby things with like mouths, and that's about it. Maybe mm. some grabby hands on on some of them. And uh, and yeah, they they start attacking the house. Your little brother Jude is in his treehouse, and he is a treasure. <laughs> I love Jude. Yeah. Because he's like, 
he's like deaf autistic, right? Uh, and he's just very convinced of like conspiracy theories and stuff. So monsters showing up to attack them is like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's exactly what I would expect to happen. <laughs> and he is prepared. Yeah. So you switch between controlling them. Like, like I would say like 80% of the time you're controlling Joey going through and solving puzzles. But then sometimes you'll switch over to Jude, who mm-hmm. is helping her solve puzzles. I think the main thing is just sending... The like pigeons. Is sending his pigeons with with marble so she can solve one of the puzzles in in um their dad's room, which um it's like why are there so many weird puzzles in this house? Which it's I think it's mostly in the dad's room. And the other puzzles are just like I don't know. Yeah, you got to get, get the right food to throw at. Yeah, get flashlight. Yeah. You got to tap dance to get the flashlight because that's her main mode of attack is tap dancing. Is it tap dancing? Or is, I think it's tap dancing and not ballet. It's, I think it's ta- yeah. Tap it was dancing. like tap. I mean, I see that she has ballet shoes, but she has tap shoes also. Yes. Which also, so, when I was a kid, I wanted tap shoes. <laughs> oh my god, I almost got into tap dancing and I went into ballet instead. I, I can't remember exactly why, but yes, my first choice was tap dancing and I got into ballet. So <laughs> Tap dancing was so cool in the early 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's like uh, yo-yos were super cool too. Like people would come to your school yeah. to do yo-yo tricks. Pogs. Yeah. Because pogs, pogs are another thing that you have. Yeah. Like, it's just such, this this game is such 90s bait. And it's it's great. So, so yeah, your your main mode of attacking is either shining the flashlight at things or tap dancing or um, using your inventory. Because this is like a point and click adventure game. So, you, you grab things and then you combine them with other things and then you use them on things. And you don't know what to do. So, you just sit around <laughs> using everything you have on everything that you can click on yeah it's it's you know it's 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 pretty classic going around like that and i don't think any of the puzzles are like overly hard yeah i know i got stuck in act one and in act two in like at least one spot i i feel like maybe i was confused about how to fight the monster or something oh and it yeah was like throwing treats or whatever yeah, yeah, solving monster fights could be hard because, like, some of it is just, like, damage, like, you tap dance for stuff. But a lot of it is, like, you're using the environment or you're using your inventory to mm-hmm. to solve the thing. Because, again, your weapons are shoes on your feet and a flashlight. <laughs> mm-hmm. We get um, some other little hints about Homestuck proper. Well, we really just get one more, which is Roxy Lalonde is your babysitter. Oh. And she is drunk all the time, mm. and it's a very bad babysitter. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's kind of, they kind of have a kind of depressing house, because uh, their dad is out, like, all the time. And when he's back, he brings all these, like, dead animal trophies. <laughs> and Joey is vegetarian, which I think is mostly in protest to all the dead animals that her dad mm. brings home. But But Jude still has the... I it I think it's like implied that you Jude still like really likes their dad, but mm. and part of that is because I think his government conspiracy theories stuff so it like makes sense he'd have to be gone or I might just be like imagining a lot that wasn't actually said in the game and is just like my theories of Jude. Yeah, I do not know. I don't remember. Yeah, if there was we- a whole lot of talk about their dad in the game yeah um yeah we don't we don't get a lot of um a time with with jude and jude's thoughts it's mostly joey being like fuck my dad (laughs) so (laughs) relatable yeah so um jude is trying to get joey to a safe spot and they end up saying that the attic would be a good place to go to Mm -hmm. so joey goes to the attic and sees a cherub coated gate thing yeah and at the time we played it you didn't know what cherubs were so you didn't know it was cherub coded but it is Mm -hmm. uh because it's uh green and red with the snakes and everything and the swirlies and this is where i have to plug uh stargate alternia the extremely long fic by harley which is it it starts out so you can probably take like the first uh chapter and the first act by themselves if you just want like a short experience with it but it's basically the concept that that portal is a Stargate portal, like it is a Stargate. And mm. I, so it's it, because it was so long between Acts 1 and 2, 
I just like my brain just said, yeah, that's a Stargate. And it's it's very hard for me to go back to the conceptualization that it is not a Stargate. (laughs) So so I I have to plug that. And we've done two episodes on um, Stargate Alternative and I'll I'll put the links in the show notes. Is there ever an explanation of of why their dad has this gate in the base in the attic? No, but I mean, we see it and then we go through it. And then it's like, well, you can't learn anything more about your dad right now because you are on an alien planet. Yeah. So, yeah, you go through the portal and then there is like the titular swap where um, you are beaming up and then uh, a troll is beaming down. And that troll is uh, Damic. And that is what Haunt Switch is supposed to be, is Mm. the point of view of Damic and Jude. Okay, but that I don't think that's been promised. I think that's been suggested as a thing that might happen. But considering how long it's taking to get out Hive Swap proper, mm-hmm. we'll see. But we'll just um, make our own Hive Swap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> people have done it. <laughs> I I, no, I mean, um, so like there are like fan games of like yeah. Friends and Proper and everything that are exist, and uh, yeah, no, they're not super interested in, in suing for that or else a lot of shit would be in trouble <laughs> but yeah no you could make as long as you don't uh, have anyone pay for it mm-hmm. you can make your own half swap and i'm sure people are i should make a random hs title generator where i just grab the h words and the s words of the dictionary and you just press a button and it gives you a random hs word <laughs> yeah well it would have to be a single syllable each each word because it's you no know, hive swap haunt switch Mm. I feel like there's another one I'm forgetting. Homestar Runner. Yeah, Homestar Runner. Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I can find a dictionary with syllabula- syllabolic information. Yeah, I, I do it all <laughs> the time for poetry. Uh, mm. Especially when I was making a... Um, I was making a... Uh, oh my god, what do you call it? The um, A limerick. I was making a limerick generator. Mm. And so I was heavily relying on the the syllable dictionaries. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so now Joey is in in Damic's hive, and it's it's stuff like if you've played uh if you've played Jesus Christ if you read Homestuck before you know it all. But I actually watched Jack Septic I play through this, and it was interesting to watch someone who does not know anything about Homestuck play through this and discover the things as Joey is discovering it. Mm-hmm. And just saying that, like, this this is beginner friendly. You don't have to know anything about Homestuck. You don't have to know anything about Trolls. You are experiencing it as as Joey is. You are learning as Joey is. But it's also not too boring or um, too much explanation for people who are aware of Homestuck and know all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think it, it works really well of uh, Joey figuring stuff out because she picks up an iPad, which is the 90s, so it's a crazy thing to have <laughs> a troll iPad, and talks with Zephros, who is uh, Damic's Morale. And yeah, you explore around Damic's house, talking with Zephros to figure out where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do. You get spooked by his lusses, which I love Damic's lusses, because it's a big, like, dog deer. Mm-hmm. And it's very majestic, I think. And that's where she puts her veterinarian skills and goose and like takes the thorn out of the paw or whatever Mm. it is that got stuck in the paw. And um, is it a dog deer or is it a cat deer? I think it's a dog deer. I'm trying to look for it in this YouTube, but there's just so much chat log. (laughs) It's hard to find. There is. There is a lot of chat log. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and I still don't know if it's more of a a dog deer or a cat deer. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, so like in the earlier section, we are switching between Joey's perspective and then now Zephros's perspective, but we spend more time with Zephros than we did with Jude. Mm-hmm. And um, that's where we learned that he's like learning how to be a good butler because that's what his blood color is good for because he's a uh, burgundy blood. I forgot about I forgot all about this guy. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, you forgot about Zephros? Poor Zephros. 
yeah, and he plays a uh, stickball, and he has um, some kind of weak uh, telekinesis powers, which I'm trying to remember. I I don't think Burgundy Bloods generally have telekinesis. You know what? I they they do have a a Burgundy Blood do it in Ardata's act because he um, tries to get the screw out from under a thing. Uh-huh for you and then has to push it back under whenever whenever our daughter notices mm-hmm. yeah like i i know uh ghost ghost aradia moves stuff with her mind but i thought that was more ghost powers than aradia powers point being i'm getting too nitpicky about the fact that you do <laughs> uh telekinesis puzzles with saffros to try to do stuff to help joey but it it's all for naught because as soon as he gets outside there is a bomb dropped and he is covered in rubble Oh yeah, and he has he has his own Lusus, which is a big sloth guy. Hmm. I am seeing the various games of Snake in in this YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, you have to solve Snake puzzles in order to uh, as as passwords for stuff. And and yeah, so so Joey goes through the house and uh, eventually goes out to Zephros and helps him, and then they ride off into okay. the horizon together to try to go to one of their contacts because the whole thing is that Ze- uh, the whole thing because Zephros and Damak are actually a part of a rebellion group that's trying to take down the heiress uh Triza mm-hmm. and uh yeah so they're going to meet one of their contacts I would say that this list looks a little bit more like a big cat than a dog a big cat okay like a lion or something yeah big cat deer what are your thoughts on on the plot as a whole as I have quickly summarized it? I mean, I guess it's mostly about getting to know the characters again and a little bit about the world and backstory. It's definitely setting up some world building of like Alternia is terrible. There's a rebel group. Um, there is some weird blood cast stuff. And the relationship between Dominic and uh, Zephyros is extremely unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Well, we all know that Homestuck is what it models the most healthy relationships. Homestuck is all about the most healthy relationships you could have. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is Homestuck. Yes, <laughs> it's very wholesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a very wholesome webcomic. Uh, definitely friends stay friends and and there's no betrayal. There's no unhealthy coping mechanisms. It's just fine. It's fine. It's fine. But, like, a big important thing is that Joey's like, you two are boyfriends? <laughs> and it's just like, boys can like other boys? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the thing. So there's a lot of um, by Joey. I think it's just by Joey headcanons. I don't think it's anything that's been verified in, in canon yet. Maybe Word of God, which, I mean, fuck Word of God, to be honest. <laughs> So there are some by Joey implications there, which is very good because again, this was the '90s, and like by people, like gay people were barely like. I mean, they were they were like right. more known, but like you didn't like say you were gay or in gay relationships for the most part, at least not like on average. All queers were punchlines on TV. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any like? Favorite, I mean, there's only like four characters, right? Uh, do you have any favorites out of those characters or like any any special like, like, how do you feel about Joey? Like that, I think that's the most important part. How do you feel about Joey? She's fine. She's cute. Like a cute little kid. Again, I didn't remember the, the troll very <laughs> at all Zephyrus, until I yeah. re- re- looked at this. Yeah. She's a perfectly fine video game protagonist to encompass to embody yeah it makes me think of like old uh 90s maybe adventure movies or something yeah i mean that works it is uh like a point and click adventure game taking place in the 90s in whatever the alternian equivalent of the 90s is because like one of the interesting things about like where it takes place along the timeline is that triza is uh you know the heiress like in homestuck for fairies the heiress mm-hmm. but uh Triza is and so this is still let's see um cuz Homestuck starts in 2009 so that's like 
20 years. I, I, I don't know the exact... Sorry, I was trying to think if I could think of the exact year that um, Half Stop takes place in. Anyway, but it's like a, around like 20 or more years in between. So, you know, like Jay wasn't alive then. So yeah. it's, I mean, just, just by the fact that, that Jake is here with, um, you know, his, his son and daughter is that, you know, Jade isn't there yet unless he is just leaving a tiny baby on an island by herself and then going <laughs> back and forth between the two families, which he's a rather irresponsible dad and grandfather, but I don't think he's leave an infant alone on an island bad. Mm. So, so yeah, so... Feferi isn't alive yet, so Triza is the current heiress. So it's it it does kind of sh- like make you think of some interesting things of like okay, well something has to happen to Triza unless this is really some alternate canon timeline, right? Yes. Uh, are you an heiress when you're the one in charge though? <laughs> well, because she because uh, the Condes is still out there doing her okay. own thing, and the heiress is is who is. Yeah, here like running stuff on the planet because she's not an adult yet, and once she becomes an adult, she's gonna have to fight the Condes for to become the Condes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she's the heiress, just uh, doing whatever the fuck she wants, blowing up towns for a selfie background, mm-hmm. which is revealed why uh, why Zephyrus's area was bombed is because she wanted a cool explosion in the background of her selfie. Doesn't sound maybe too far off from like real life in some ways. Like I it, can see, I could see it, some people doing that. Yeah, yeah, you could. It really does not feel like that much of a stretch. So Severus's personality right now is kind of subservient, and Joey is trying to to get him to be more than just kind of subservient. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I mean, he's training to be a butler. I guess it makes sense. I'm also watching the Game, game Grumps play Duncan Rampa 3, and we just did the stuff with the Ultimate Maid. So, um, you know, he could be a very good butler, technically. I have no context. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, homestuck, homestuck people will. A lot of people use the time of the Gigapaws to go get into Duncan Rampa. Mm-hmm. I was at one of those. I didn't get into it until after. I will eventually watch some Game Grumps. Tr- da- bleh, da- Duncan Rampa. Duncan Rampa, yeah. I just have not had time to be watching some Let's Plays. Anyway, hi, Swapped. What color blood would the Game Grumps have? What color blood would the Game Grumps have? What would the class specs of uh, Aaron be? Oh, God, I know that people have, like, serious (laughs) answers to this question. Oh, man. You know what? Put on the spot. I'm not (laughs) even sure. Like, I just feel like... I think Dan would be, oh my God, I'm thinking like maybe something mid-tier, um, mid-tier or, or or high blood. Um, and I think Aaron would be, I don't know, I'm either going like uh, low blood or fuchsia. Like those are my two vibes for Dan <laughs> or for Aaron. I can't imagine Dan being like a high blood and then Aaron being like a little goblin low blood. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like his little goblin, uh, goblin burgundy blood on his leash, like running around. I'm just thinking of Danny's um, cover of the last unicorn song. Just how much I've not listened to that. <laughs> Maybe they're both just purple bloods. They're both just <laughs> fucking clowns. They're both juggalos. They have the chaotic energy for it. <laughs> yeah. And I know I've seen fan art of of at least Aaron in some sort of god tier outfit did Aaron ever read homestuck you think i don't think so um i think he'd get bored of it pretty quick uh it, it just takes so long to get into it if you're not like into the computer jokes or you're not already mm-hmm. invested in what you know is going to come so um i think he would drop off of it if he ever tried to to get into it okay that's that's high thought back one. Um, we are going to be talking about Friendsome next. We have gone through several of the volumes right now. I think seven. We're going to do eight next week. Uh, next week, relative to us, not you. I have no idea when you guys are going <laughs> to hear it. Mm. Uh, probably probably the day that this releases, if everything goes well on the editing side of things, we'll be doing Act Eight, which I'm hype about, or Volume Eight, which I'm hype about because that's Tizius. 
I've been hyping up Tizia so much. I love her. Yeah, I don't know anything about Tizia. That's fine. You'll you'll get the appeal. Even if you like you don't feel the same that I do, you will understand the appeal of Tizia. Okay. Just um you'll get it. I like I have never been more confident about a homestuck related <laughs> thing in regards to you and your opinions. If you are do, do not have the same feelings, you will understand. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, yeah, and, and we'll be doing this for the foreseeable future, I, I guess, unless other shit happens. I don't know. The foreseeable future is, like, two weeks from now for me. Like, it's yeah. like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I can't foresee anything. <laughs> we'll we'll see if maybe um, we can get Damian to talk about her data. That's really all I care about. Like, the other people don't have to come on and talk about the characters they voiced. But I always got to offer Dami the opportunity to come on and talk about her data. Um, that's like her whole personality is our data. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening. Join the discord rate us on Spotify and Apple podcasts. And I think, uh, pocket cast now lets you rate, share with your friends if you like it. And, uh, yeah, check out all the links for where Moosey is and where I am. I mentioned, uh, if this didn't get cut out that I made, two games i will link that below this time and maybe only this time i'm just very happy with them one is mm -hmm. uh going through the story of uh the song lake poncho train by ludo except you know to make it a game there's more than one ending and then the other is pop dart quest and that's all you need to know about it it it's what it is <laughs> says it isn't on the tin it's pop dart quest so go check those out join the kofi if you want to help me pay Dami better than what I'm currently paying Dami on a more regular basis for editing. And then also check out Fake Gamer Bro, which is my mobile game podcast, which is still less popular than my Homestuck podcast because people who love Homestuck search out all the content about Homestuck they can. People who like mobile games go, hee hee, Candy Crush. <laughs> oh, uh, moosity.itch.io. Also, I have to let my cat out of the room. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, cat, and goodbye, Moosey. Thank you to Dami for composing the theme song and editing the episode. You can find more of her work at soundcloud.com slash dominothief. Shout out to our fakest fan tier supporters, Danny the Spoon Lord and Tezrak. You can become a supporter and receive early episodes and bonus content for as little as $1 a month over at ko-fi.com slash jacksyaks or simply give a one-time tip. For information on and links to my other projects, head over to jacksyax.com. Thanks again for listening. 